Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. In today's video, I will be focusing on the beautiful islands of Hawaii. There are eight major islands that make up Hawaii, but there are over a hundred unpopulated smaller islands. Each of these islands house some unique wildlife, some of which can't be found anywhere else in the world, such as the Hawaiian monk seal, the Hawaiian bat, and the Hawaiian hawk. As the majority of the Hawaiian islands are volcanic, they also have very rich soil. This means that the people of Hawaii are able to produce many crops, including sugarcane, pineapples, coffee, and macadamia nuts. Even if you haven't been to Hawaii, you've probably seen it in films or TV series, as famously part of Jurassic Park was filmed on one of the islands. Unfortunately, Hawaii is also badly affected by invasive species, as Hawaii has lost more native species than any other state, with around 70% of its native birds now being extinct, and the rest are mostly endangered. In today's video, I'll be going through just a few of these invasive species, as I'll be going through five invasive species in Hawaii. And for our first species, we can head to pretty much anywhere around the globe, as we have the barn owl. The barn Barn owl is the most widely distributed species of owl, and is also one of the most widespread of all bird species. It can be found almost anywhere apart from polar and desert regions, and of course some Pacific islands, as they can be found almost everywhere around the world. They are many different subspecies. These birds tend to hunt in twilight or at night, where they use a mixture of their eyesight and their hearing to find their prey. In most areas they eat small rodents, such as mice, voles and shrews, but larger specimens are known to be able to take rats, and some have even been observed catching fish from ponds. On this diet, they reached an average size of around 40 centimeters or 15 inches. Unsurprisingly, they got the name of barn owl as they like to nest in barns. But some of these birds choose more natural nesting sites, such as holes in trees, quarries, and rocky outcrops. Unlike some owls that are known for their hooting, the barn owl has a distinctive shrieking call. <coughs> Listening out for this shrieking call is a very good way to locate them. Hawaii used to be one of the few places that you couldn't find these barn owls, but today this is not the case. These owls were introduced into Hawaii in 1958, and this was to control rodent populations on sugarcane farms. A total of 15 birds were imported from California, and over the next five years another 71 owls were introduced. These Californian barn owls were specialist rodent hunters in North America, but they seemed to change their habits in Hawaii. Although they had a small effect on the rodent population, they also started to hunt Hawaiian native birds. They were observed targeting the endangered Hawaiian petrels, and also the wedge-tailed shearwaters. As these birds had very few predators on Hawaii, they were able to reproduce and spread very quickly. One of the only things limiting the barn owl spread is the native pueu. This is a native species of short-eared owl, and although it's much smaller, it does compete with the barn owls for food so hopefully this little owl will help stop the spread of the invasive barn owl. But for our next species, we'll be heading to Yemen and Saudi Arabia, as we have the veiled chameleon. This chameleon got its strange name because of the shark fin-like appendage on its head. This appendage is actually quite useful, as it directs dew and condensation into its mouth. This chameleon is an arboreal species, and spends most of its life in trees. In these areas, they're mainly insectivores, being on a wide variety of insects, as well as flowers, leaves, and occasionally even small birds and mammals. As this chameleon is quite slow, to catch these food items it has a sticky spring-loaded tongue. This can be launched one and a half times its own body length, and if it connects, the prey has little chance of escape. Chameleons are known as masters of disguise, as they can rapidly change the colour of their skin to either help them blend in or to communicate with other chameleons. This species can reach a maximum length of around 61 centimetres, making it a pretty hefty lizard. But how did this veiled chameleon make its way to Hawaii? Well, the short answer is the pet trade. Hawaiian state law prohibits the importing of chameleons, lizards and snakes, as they can have a devastating devastating impact on the ecosystem. That means that these chameleons were imported illegally and eventually escaped or were released into the wild. Surprisingly, they aren't the only chameleon that's invasive in Hawaii, as the three-horned Jackson chameleon can also be found on Hawaii. The first sighting of a veiled chameleon on Hawaii was in 2004. Since then, some populations have become established in the wild, and this is very bad news for the endemic animals. They prey on many of the native insects and plants, as well as the numerous endemic birds. As these reptiles are so well camouflaged, it's hard for the birds to spot these predators and it's also very hard for the authorities to spot them and remove them. But hopefully their numbers can be better controlled in the future, and Hawaii's native birds can bounce back. But for our next species, we'll be heading to the marine waters of the Indo-Pacific, as we have the peacock grouper. These fish have a pretty wide distribution across the Indo-Pacific, and tend to prefer warm, shallow waters, mostly along reefs. In these areas, they're ambush predators, where they mainly feed on young sturgeon fish and crustaceans. These fish are relatively small for a grouper, reaching an average length of around 60 centimeters. This grouper 
was introduced into Hawaii from French Polynesia in the 1950s. This was with the intention that they would be a new game fish and a new source of food for the people of Hawaii. This plan completely backfired, as if eaten these fish caused ciguatera poisoning, which could cause diarrhea, vomiting, dizziness and weakness. And as these groupers can eat around 150 reef fish per year, they have now become the most dominant predator on Hawaiian reefs, which has had a huge negative effect on the native fish. In the last few years, the people of Hawaii have come up with a few interesting ways of controlling this species, as there's often tournaments to spear fish for these groupers, and by only targeting these invasive species, it can help the native fish bounce back. So hopefully with more measures like this, these groupers will be forced out of Hawaii. Before our next species, we'll be heading to northern South Asia, as we have the small Indian mongoose. This small mammal is normally found in dry grasslands and forests in the wild, where they're usually found alone, or in some cases, small family groups. These mammals are known for being very intelligent and adaptable, and feed on a wide variety of foods. A large majority of their diet is made up by insects, but are also known to feed on small mammals, amphibians, reptiles, and even small birds. Unfortunately, this species hasn't just been introduced into Hawaii, as it's been introduced into parts of Europe, and even other parts of Asia. This has led to them being on the 100 worst invasive species list, as they've proven to be very hard to get rid of. The small Indian mongoose was introduced into Hawaii in 1883, mainly to control the rats in the sugarcane fields. This introduction was misguided, as although they do feed on rodents, they pretty much feed on everything else smaller than them. These mammals preyed on the eggs and hatchlings of native ground nesting birds, and also endangered sea turtles that nested on the beaches of Hawaii. This mongoose has also been blamed for the extinction of ground nesting birds in Jamaica and Fiji, and is the reason why the Hawaiian crow and the Hawaiian goose are now endangered. There are many plans and efforts to help control their numbers, and hopefully they won't be as big a problem in the future. But for our final species, we'll be heading to Australia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea, as we have the brown tree snake. Now surprisingly, this snake isn't actually invasive in Hawaii at the moment, but at least eight individuals have been found there, and if it were to become established, it would mean the end for Hawaii's unique ecosystem. In the wild, they typically grow to a size of between one to two meters, but they are a relatively thin snake. This snake is one of the most famous invasive species in the world, as it had a massive impact on the wildlife of Guam. Shortly after World War II, this snake was accidentally transported from its native range into Guam. This was probably as a stowaway on ship cargo, or from crawling into the landing gear of Guam-bound aircraft. As there was an abundance of prey on Guam, and virtually no natural predators, this snake's population reached unprecedented numbers, and caused the extinction of many native mammals and birds. At one point there were around 50 snakes per acre, and the brown tree snakes in Guam were growing much larger than in any other place in the world. This also affected the people of Guam, as these snakes invaded people's homes, and were responsible for biting many people. As this snake has proven to be very destructive, it would be devastating if they made their way to Hawaii. Because of the potential impacts, all shipments coming into Hawaii from Guam are thoroughly checked and monitored to make sure this snake never becomes established in Hawaii. It's estimated that if they became established in Hawaii, it could cost $28 million to $405 million annually. So if you're in Hawaii and you see one of these snakes, it's very important that you call your local authorities. But that's about it for this video. If you have another area that you want me to cover in one of these videos, then leave them down in the comments below. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye. Thank you.